Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. In a nutshell, I think things are looking mixed, but let's get into the details. Starting with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic, the animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 11th. And to start off with, there's an Atlantic flow pushing across the UK, outbreaks of rain in the far northwest there. It's a drier scenario though and southern and central counties with high pressure having more influence at this point. Running the sequence, things don't really change a great deal in the short term. There could be some rain in the south there, uncertainty about how far north it goes. And then as we head into the weekend, it's a more generally unsettled pattern which takes shape. Low pressure centered close to Scotland here and the isobars becoming more tightly packed together. So an increasing chance of showers, longer spells of rain and windy conditions in all areas. Then things really start to become quite uncertain. On this GFS animation, there's a southwesterly flow which begins to establish itself. Areas of low pressure centered here, close to the southwest of the UK, high pressure there much further, uh, westwards in the Atlantic. It looks rather mild and unsettled if this is correct, but I'll just discuss that in a little bit more detail in a moment because it's not a given. The air mass uh, sequence, temperature sequence associated with that GFS run highlights the mild in Australia, although at times colder air does flirt with the northern half of the UK in particular. But then by the end, the yellows and oranges are pushing up across much of Europe with that uh, southerly or southwesterly flow becoming dominant low pressure centered to the southwest of the UK. If that's correct, here are the temperatures that we could expect. Maximums on Wednesday v 12, 16, 17s across much of the south and the east cooler in the northwest. Going forwards to Friday and it's still relatively mild, although single figures there in Scotland and parts of northern England as that cooler air starts to push in. There could also be some chilly nights in the north. There's, there's quite a big temperature contrast showing up between the north and the south through the nights. These are the forecast minimums, 06 GMT Saturday the 15th. Single figures there across the northern half of the UK, ground frost a distinct possibility, but in the south, double figures 10, 11, 12 there in the southeastern corner, a lot milder. And that really is a similar profile to what has been shown on a number of nights through the first week. Moving forwards to Sunday afternoon, so going back to the maximums, mild again in southern and central Britain, cooler there in the north and the northwest. Finally, Monday the 17th and not a great deal changes. If anything, it's starting to become even milder in England, 18 Celsius there, 64 Fahrenheit in old money. At this point, that southwesterly flow is starting to establish itself with high pressure centered a long way to the west in the Atlantic. But that mild scenario is not a given. Colder outcomes are possible. One or two computer models are showing this type of thing happening. It's the charts here are from the Canadian global model, and they are valid for Tuesday, the 18th of October. The air mass temperatures on the left show a much colder plunge moving down from the north, the blue shading over. The UK indicates um, 850 HPA val values at around minus five Celsius. The two metre temperatures on the right for Tuesday afternoon, single figures across the UK, particularly cold in the northern half of the UK, where showers would be falling as sleet or snow over high ground. It is possible, this scenario, but it's most certainly not the favoured one. I'll just take a look at the probabilities as well in a moment. And to help look at those, I'll bring up MoGreps charts. So these are from the UK Met Office um, ensemble model. This particular one shows mean surface level pressure forecasts for London. 
the trend is downwards through the first week. High pressure dominant really to begin with, centered to the south of the UK, but that theme is for pressure to be dipping as more than Atlantic flow sinks southwards across the UK and low pressure becomes centered close to Scotland. Temperatures, now this is a wired up from the cold scenario is favored, the one the Canadian model was going for. Maximums in London, often into the teens there through the first week, and most of the runs in the ensemble are supporting the relatively mild outcome. There's, there's, there's quite good consistency there even further down the line. There isn't a big, big spread in the runs which sometimes develops. The Canadian model therefore is an outlier at the moment, particularly for the southern half of the UK. I think the chances of colder conditions in the north are significantly higher, but in southern and central regions they remain low. It could turn windier though with the more unsettled theme developing. Um, wind forecast gusts for London again from Mogreps. There's an increasing trend from around the 13th, 14th of October. Having said that, not especially windy for the time of year. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. Gusts of maybe 30 or 40 miles an hour in southern Britain. Comparable charts for locations further north and west go for higher values as is usually the case. But at this stage, nothing too worrying. Rainfall. Days 0 to 5, these forecasts are aggregate ones from the ECM model on the left, GFS on the right. Decent consistency between the two. The highest totals in the west, particularly the northwest. GFS on the right, quite interestingly, has significant rainfall in the far southeast of England. That's associated with a feature which runs probably to the south of the UK during the first few days of the week. It was visible on the animation. There's that uncertainty about how far northwards it will reach. Moving forwards to the days 0 to 10 period, reasonable consistency between these two uh, predictions. The highest values in the west, the northwest, but by this time, all parts of the UK have seen significant amounts of rain, about 20 millimetres there in central and eastern counties. Well, how do all the deterministic models compare with each other at the end of the first week? I've already shown the difference between the Canadian model and the GFS, but let's just step through them one by one in a little bit more detail. Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 18th. That southwesterly influence with low pressure centered out here, high pressure even further west over Greenland. The Canadian model, the cold scenario, the Arctic air moving southwards. The German icon, a little bit of a halfway house, perhaps colder air moving down across the northern half of the UK, the southwesterly influence further south. The European ECM, again, perhaps some colder air pushing down into Scotland, a lot milder in the south. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, quite similar really to the ECM, something of a colder signal across the northern half of the UK and a milder one in the south. Sticking all those together and trying to draw some conclusions, my interpretation is that there's a reasonable chance of it turning somewhat colder for a time in the northern half of the UK. In the south, it probably stays mild. And that colder theme in the north isn't assured, but it is a definite possibility. Well, how are the trends looking for the second week of the forecast period? I'll begin with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top. The signal this week's fairly clear. It's above average. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, stays above the thick black line throughout the second week or virtually throughout it. Across the bottom, the rain spikes there continue to appear. 
although there are fewer towards the very end, possibly suggesting that high pressure could be starting to build back, maybe a greater chance of dry periods. The two metre uh, day temperature data table for London showing forecast maximums. If anything, there's a weak trend towards cooler conditions towards the end of the chart there for the last few days. But all in all, this orange is fairly dominant, 16s to 20s. There are an increasing number of runs in the yellow category. Those are going for maximums of between 11 and 15. I don't think temperatures, daytime temperatures at least, are a big discussion point. What about the minimums? So through the nights in southern England, yellows, the 11s to 15s being the majority in these columns. They, they indicate rather mild nights being favoured or even very mild nights. There is an increase in amount of the light green towards the end there, the 6 to 10s. All in all, though, not a signal here for there to be a frost risk, at least in the London area. Perhaps at this time of the year, in more rural areas, if we get some quiet and clear nights, there could be ground frost. All in all, though, it's looking mild by night in the south. Comparable charts for locations further north do point towards a greater risk of frost, but very much as you would expect at this point in the autumn. The um, 850 HPA temperatures and rainfall chart for Manchester, the signal across the top there is for MS temperatures to be above the average for much of the time, really very similar to the London plot. The anomaly is perhaps a little bit small, but the general trend is consistent. The risk of rain ongoing, although possibly reducing later on. The two metre temperature data table for Manchester there isn't really a key difference here, perhaps just a slight cooling trend later on, an increasing number of runs there in the 6 to 10 Celsius bracket through the second half of the week, but it's really quite a tenuous transition. There isn't much happening here, very close to the average, I would say, on the whole. Up to Glasgow, the um, 850 HPA temperature profile, are quite similar, slightly above the average. The anomaly is smaller than the Manchester one, which was a little bit smaller than the London one, I think, but it doesn't look particularly cold by any means. If anything, as I say, the the message here is that temperatures will be above the average for much of a week, possibly just dipping there towards the end. Risk of rain, some big spikes showing up, so wetter than it was in the London uh, area. But even on this plot, the number of them decreases towards the end, so there could be a greater chance of dry periods by the end of the second week. The two metre uh, temperature data table for Glasgow. Very, very flat, I think would be one way to describe it. There isn't a great deal of change taking place throughout. The light greens, the 6 to 10s, and the yellows, 11 to 15s, just taking it in turns really to be the dominant colour in these columns. Perhaps the light greens have the upper hand later on with the yellows in the box seat to begin with, so maybe just cooling there a little bit. A look at the mean surface level pressure forecast for Friday the 21st of October from the GEFS. These are generated by averaging out all of the runs in the ensemble. Fairly typical of the pattern, perhaps not as flat as it sometimes is, but high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, just the suggestion that colder air could be moving down across the northern half of the UK on occasion, but oh no, it does look fairly typical, nothing out of the ordinary. And the European um, ECM plot for the same time, at least the same time period, quite similar, maybe a little bit more amplification there, which would suggest a greater chance of positive or negative uh, temperature anomalies, but all in all, nothing out of the norm. 
Finally, the uh, mean surface level pressure anomaly chart for days 10 to 15 from the GEFS. This is based on a comparison with the 1981-2010 average. The yellows, oranges and browns are positive, so basically you can think of it as being above average pressure, with the blues negative. Therefore, perhaps through days 10 to 15, pressure will be building and becoming more high pressure may be starting to become more influential. And just coupled with this chart is the mean surface level pressure data table for York, which really reinforces that message because towards the end there, through the second week, there's some indications of the oranges, very high pressure, 1026 to 1040 millibars, and the yellows, 1011 to 1025, starting to really assert themselves. So it's quite a mixed pattern. There isn't a very strong signal in through week two on any of these charts, really. Nothing too much out of the ordinary, but perhaps drier and more high pressure dominated towards the very end. So to summarize, week one, it's changeable, wettest and windiest in the north and the west, but all parts of the UK seeing some rain. Temperatures often above the average in the south and close to it in the north, although there is that chance of it turning colder for a time, and there could be some sleet or snow showers over high ground. Week two, the message is for unsettled conditions to be dominant, at least through the first part of it. Temperatures close to the average in the north and above it in the south. Towards the end, it could be turning drier. High pressure becomes more influential. That would lead at least to a chance of colder nights, a greater risk of frost and fog. So, there we have it. I think mixed sums it up, as I stated at the very beginning. Quite typical for this time of year. Nothing too extreme. Not really a signal there for an early start for winter. There has been a lot of speculation in the media recently about that possibility. Although, as I mentioned, it could be colder in the north, at least for a time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.